let's take an objective look at the equation that Einstein used to represent a particle of light or the photon. The reason for this is due to a spike in views for a video I did last year called The Quantum Flaw. There were a lot of views, but for some reason they were not watching the video for very long. And most of the comments were centered around the unit analysis section of that video. The next day I was able to look at the YouTube analytics and figure out that that traffic was coming from Reddit. So then I found the post that linked my video and understood it was under the context of how to combat pseudoscience. So at that point, then I understood that the subreddit physics army was out to debunk my video. And that's totally fine, except it was very misrepresented in the comment section. And my attempts to clarify my position got me quickly and permanently banned. And I agree with them because afterwards I read this rule. This forum is more for traditionally accepted academic physics. But since most of them did not watch the video, I want to clarify that this is not my discovery or my theory. And the unit analysis portion of that video is based on this peer-reviewed paper in this physics essays journal. I think that Lori did a great job with this idea, and I'm just trying to teach it. Okay, so that's enough of the backstory. Let's do a simple red photon experiment and see if there is a dependency on one second of time for the Einstein photon. Let's stay with the currently accepted unit analysis, and we will have to show that this dependency exists. For our experiment, we can use this red laser pointer that has a wavelength of 650 nanometers. This defines our red photon particle of light, 650 nanometer wavelength and 1.91 electron volts for the energy of this photon. Now let's verify the data with Wolfram Alpha. We have 650 nanometer red light and we have 461 terahertz or 461 trillion and a photon energy of 1.91 electron volts. Now, where does the 461 trillion come from? Or what causes this number? How do you derive this number? You take the speed of light and you divide into it the wavelength of light. And that gives you this number. And then you take this number and plug it into frequency in E equals HF. So let's verify. 300 million meters per second divided by 650 nanometers is 461 trillion or 461 terahertz, which is per second. In other words, in one second of time, light travels this distance. And then you can fit 461 trillion of these inside of this much space. Now this is a one second dependency that gets plugged in to this equation and makes the energy of a photon dependent on one second's worth of time. Now how does nature know to build the energy of a photon based upon one second's worth of anything? A lot of comments that I get from this question revolve around the idea of it's an artifact of the way we measure things. Like instead of a per second hertz, you can change it to some other arbitrary number. Uh, time is a variable. So let's try that out. Let's flash the red laser pointer really fast. And then we can count the number of video frames that that laser pulse lasted. One, two, three, four. The video records at 30 frames per second, so each frame lasts 0 .033 seconds, and we had four of those frames. So basically, that laser pulse was 0 .133 seconds long. 
so we're modifying the one second down to 0.133 seconds and when you plug it into this equation you only get 61 trillion instead of the needed 461 trillion and then you don't have enough energy to create a red photon. This is because light only got to travel about one-eighth of a second instead of a full second. That means it only went about 40 million meters instead of 300 million meters. And when you divide the wavelength of the red light into the 40 million meters, you get 61 trillion instead of the necessary 461 trillion. And then when you multiply that 61 trillion times Planck's constant, you get 0.25 electron volts. And that is not enough energy for a red photon. So we can see that photon energy is dependent on one second's worth of time when it comes to the math equation. The experiment still showed us a red colored light pulse and the math did not agree with that when it was less than one second. With 61 trillion in this equation, the only way to get a red photon would be to modify Planck's constant. If you modify the Planck's constant here, then you will screw up everything that has to do with the black body radiation curve. One last argument has to do with that we measure stuff and then wrap our mathematics around what we measure or what we gather as evidence. If you watch the video, you will see that the quantum of light or the photon was never measured. It is a thought experiment of Einstein and he reused Max Planck's black body radiation experiment equation. We didn't change anything with unit analysis here and the math still shows that photon energy is dependent upon one second's worth of time. Now how in the world does that work? So this number here and I don't care what you call it, cycles, waves, oscillations, or just say it's a number. It depends on one second of time to go by in order to get this proper number, which then somehow fills this photon particle with the proper energy. If this energy changes for some reason, then the photon would be a different color. For example, 2.48 electron volts would be a greenish photon. If the photon energy does not depend on one second, then we have to ignore all the time and space that is happening on this side of the equation and believe that this somehow occurs naturally and instantly. The Einstein photon particle doesn't make sense because it is wrong. Dr. Juliana Brooks Mortensen figured this out back in the 90s. And then she inspired Lori Gardy to fix the problem by proposing her modified unit analysis. All I did was give up the idea of the photon, and then I figured out what was dependent upon it, and it led me down this path. It's not a theory or a conspiracy theory. I'm just documenting what I found along the way. So if you watch the whole Quantum Flaw video, it will go into detail on why this is the problem and how to fix it. And thanks for watching.